Hello there, welcome to NTV Tonight in our top stories. Tonight, a disturbing admission. Every smoke has some uh, bit of fire. And the search for an elusive truth as investigators stand on the heat of the scandal ridden Kenya Pipeline Company. Our judgment at the back. Also tonight, DPP's special prosecutor's first day in office leaves a bitter taste in the mouths of many lawyers. If the Attorney General could tell you when our Solicitor General tried to appear in a British court, you were sent scampering. As the DPP maintains, he's still the man to steer the case against the DCJ. Also ahead, a father in Mombasa turns on his own daughters. And also tonight, the deadlock of a plans to end the city gridlock. NTSA's shuttle bus plans in a jam as Matatu operators protest the phasing out of 14 seaters. NTV Tonight with Zainab Ismail. Our sign language interpreter this evening is David Agondoa. Now the case facing Deputy Chief Justice Philomena Mwilu has been put on hold pending determination of an application on whether the appointment of prosecution lead prosecutor Professor Hawar Qureshi was done in accordance with the law. There was a showdown in court between the prosecution and the defense with two of the lead defense lawyers also facing possible exclusion from the case. Our judgment at the back. Queen's Council Kawar Kureshi jokingly dished out sweets to the defense team in a show that he had come in peace. But this did not save him for what the defense lawyers had in store for him. It was a hearing expected to address summons on joinder and amicus curiae applications, a hearing whose objective changed as soon as the court had introductions from all parties. If indeed he is admitted for purposes of any case in exercise of that absolute discretion by the Attorney General, then there should be evidence of admission to the bar. The defense went to battle with the end goal being to edge out their opponent, freshly recruited prosecutor and Queen's counsel, Kawar Kureshi. If the Attorney General could tell you when our Solicitor General tried to appear in a British court, he was sent scampering. So what is good is good for the goose, is good for the gander. Uh, if, if they can treat it like that in their own country, we also have rules in our own country. <laughs> A spirited prosecution team countered the defense application with one of their own, declaring senior counsel James Sorengo and Okongo Omogeni unfit to participate in the case as they also serve in the Senate, an oversight body which creates a conflict of interest. As a senator, he sat in the Senate yesterday, where the DPP and the Honor Attorney General appeared. This matter was extensively discussed. The background and the documents, and it was pretty to them. There was drama in the court, as the state counsel, Dr. Sodor, expressed concern over disrespect by junior counsel Nelson Harvey for having tweeted alluding to the assumption that the inclusion of the Queen's counsel, Kawar Koreshi, in the case is a reflection of the competence of the prosecution team. An advocate of 28 years, Mr. Mutiti is 18 years, Mr. Bita is 15 years, I've even appeared as an expert in the, to the Security Council as a criminal lawyer and he's calling us clueless fellows. That matter must be dealt with. He must be reprimanded or he disqualifies himself. That is not the conduct of an advocate. The case that will determine whether or not Professor Kawar Kuresh will participate in the case facing Deputy Chief Justice Philomena Mwilu will be heard on the 17th of January 2019. The defense team maintains that the right to practice law in Kenya cannot be casually granted and that the office of the DPP ought to follow due process. Charity Mwangi, NTV. 
All right, and away from that, Petroleum and Mining Cabinet Secretary John Munez has admitted that there is a systemic corruption at the Kenya Pipeline Company and it should be dealt with immediately. Speaking this afternoon, Munez said results of a forensic audit and investigations being carried out by the Directorate of Criminal Investigations and the Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission hold the key to the truth and action would be taken against those found culpable. And to his Kennedy Murethi reports. Pressure continues to pile on government officials with a multi billion scandal at the Kenya Pipeline Company, a key national debate issue. At a press conference this afternoon, the line cabinet secretary John Munez called for patience, saying investigations are ongoing. He also admitted that the state owned oil company is riddled with corruption. You talk of a smoke. Every smoke has some uh, bit of fire. There must be a problem there. People cannot be talking of a <coughs> Kenya pipeline or, or whichever company without, without a pro seeing a problem. KPC is under a dark cloud of accusations, and this is only the latest in a long line. It centers on the alleged theft of billions of money in the construction of the A5 pipeline from Mombasa to Nairobi through Zakim International and fictitious claims of oil spillage of about 11.6 million liters at a cost of about 2 billion shillings. These are nepotism problems, uh, loss of resources there, maybe the way we uh, you know, undertake our expenditures in that project, the issues about the... Uh, uh, the, the pipeline, the Line 5, this has been a big issue. Three committees of parliament are seized of the matter and have called on ministry officials and KPC staff to answer questions on the ongoing probe where they say they seek to get to the bottom of the matter. I believe there could be bad elements in the, in the Kenya pipeline. Munez has now been summoned to the Senate Energy Committee for not having appeared before it twice when invited to do so. He is required to appear before the committee next week. Kennedy Moredi, NTV. A group of legislators from ODM and the larger NASA say the judiciary is the weakest link in the war on corruption and impunity in the country. They want the courts to stop being quick to release on bail suspects in high-profile corruption cases. The leaders have condemned the decision by the court to allow high-profile public and state officials facing charges to stay in office. The MP say such officials should step aside while the criminal cases against the them proceed. They want such suspects to be required to step aside to prevent them from using their offices to interfere with investigations and intimidate witnesses. They have also accused the Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission of failing in its mandate despite engaging in high-profile raids and collecting documents terming such activities as a mere show. know from experience that these suspects, when they go out, they use the ill-gotten money to interfere with the investigation. It only behoves any suspect, and they still remain suspects as such, to step aside because the fears that would always present themselves are that they are sitting on certain crucial documents or pieces of evidence that are relied upon by the DPP to stand trial. And again, if they still enjoy the trappings of office and opulence, they have capabilities to interfere with the witnesses. As it stands, the conscience of the country is restless. What message does the judiciary send to the country when persons facing economic and capital offenses charges are easily granted bail and are busy gallivanting across the country, threatening witnesses, retaining access to offices, now, President Uhuru Kenyatta has defended his decision to appoint former Vice President Mudia Wari to the National Sports Fund Board. The President says Awari is in a better position to protect the funds than any young person, citing numerous cases of impropriety by the younger generation. The President, who dismissed his critics, stood his ground, and as Ken Mijungu now reports, despite the public outcry and pressure, this appointment is here to stay. 
It was a perfect gift for former Vice President and career civil servant Moody Awori, who celebrated his 91st birthday on Wednesday when President Kenyatta nominated him to the National Sports Fund Board. But for many, it was unpalatable that Uncle Moody, as he is popularly known, would resurface from a relatively quiet, having retreated to undertake his personal and family affairs since his exit from active public life in 2007. <laughs> mzee achunge ndiyo uh, iwarudi ah watu waniwache bwana mimi sitaki mambo mingi <laughs> The outcry stems from the fact that Moody Awori, who has since accepted the appointment, is 91 years old. It's also because this is a youth institution in a country where the majority are the youth and one of the biggest problems is unemployment. Further, the last time Moody was in government, he was 80 years old. That was in 2007, just before the disputed presidential election. That I'm appointing a 91-year-old to, to look after... <laughs> the youth sports fund and uh, lakini jameni let me put you put yourself in my shoes ukiona vile watu wanaiba pesa National Sports Fund is a state corporation under the Ministry of Sports, Culture and Arts. The fund is mandated to raise money through sports lottery, investments and any other means to disburse the funds for the development of sports and recreation. This is what Moody and other board members will be managing. Alafu tuseme tupatie kijana, mimi afadhali nikae na huyo mzee bwana achunge hiyo pesa itumike vile inatakikana. Even though 91 is a new high, this is not the first time the president is standing firmly behind an appointee deemed to be way beyond the age limit as regards serving the public. In October, he publicly called on the youth to learn how to lead before they are appointed to the coveted positions. This was in reference to the appointment of 79-year-old Matu Wamai at the new KCC as the board chairperson. Na hata sisi vijana tujifunze tualia sana kila siku ya kwamba ati hatuna kazi, ati wazee waondoke. Lakini kule vijana wengine wako, tunaona tabu. Lakini kule wazee tunawaona, tunaona maendeleo. Despite these notable appointments, for those considered above the age of an active workforce, the president has also appointed some of the youngest cabinet secretaries in recent history. Ken Mijungu. NTV. All right, and that report there forms the basis of our opinion count this evening. And we are asking you, is the president right in appointing 91-year-old Moody Awori to the sports board? Is the president right in appointing 91-year-old Moody Awori to the sports? We'd like to hear from you the hashtag Kazi Kwawaze. Also hashtag NTV tonight. You can tweet us at, at NTV Kenya, subsequently at Zainab Ismail. Just to repeat that question, is the president right in appointing 91-year-old Moody Moody Awori to the sports board. Let us hear your opinion in regard to that. We'll be able to sample some of those views during the course of this bulletin. Now, a group of Matatu operators is opposed to plans by the government to decongest the city by replacing the 14 seater Matatus with buses. The Association of Matatu Sakos says that the decision was made without consultation and the association will oppose it as it will lock out their members from business. The group spoke even as others raised concerns on the ownership of some of the companies contracted to operate the bus rapid transport system in the capital and to be silent the polar reports members of the matatu circles association want plans by the government through the national transport and safety authority ntsa to phase out 14 seater matatu stopped they want everyone in the sector involved 14 seater tuta kubali yondolewe na kama itaondolewa lazima hao watu wakue compensated 14 seater matatus have been the preferred means of transport for most commuters across the country. They have, however, been blamed for the heavy traffic experience on most roads, and their drivers also accused of recklessness on the roads, which have been linked to accidents. NTSA Director General Francis Major had earlier said that the authority was no longer registering 14 seater matatus. The circle members say they were also angered by what they said is the decision by the government to introduce the rapid bus transport system without the input of all stakeholders. 
They say that some of the companies shortlisted to manage the implementation of the BRT were single-handedly picked by the government. The directorship involves some of the cartels that have been, pro, that have been uh, pretending, presumably, that they are the, owner of, the owners of Matatus. They have been promised that the, they will be given the 64 first uh, shipment of buses, BRT buses, to share amongst themselves. The government has said that the BRT system is expected to decongest the city, rein in on drug matter to drivers, and restore order in the otherwise disorganized public transport system in Nairobi. Priority corridors are the Jomo Kenyatta International Airport to Likoni, James Gishuru to Rironi, and Bomas to Ruiru Roads. Other motorways also identified include Ngong Roads to Juja, Mamalusi to Tuimol, and Balozi to Imara Roads. At their OPM capacity, the corridors are expected to hold up to 950 high-capacity buses, reducing travel time and cost by up to 70%, according to the Ministry of Transport. The buses are also to be deployed on the already marked thicker superhighway and other major roads within the capital, Nairobi. The first batch of the 30 BRT vehicles, which had already been identified in South Africa, were expected to arrive in the country in June. Silas Apollo, NTV. I right, listen to this disturbing story. Now, police have arrested a man who killed his two daughters in Mishamoroni, Mombasa County. James Miner, whom police say was drunk, called his two daughters into his home, having told them that he wanted to share some mangoes. He then locked the door and stabbed the two to death. Grief has engulfed Mishomoroni in Mombasa County after a man went berserk and took the life of his two daughters. Six-year-old Angel Wanja and her four-year-old sister were playing outside their home before their father James Minor called them in the house to give them mangoes. Little did the two children know that the sweetness of the mangoes they had been called for was a trap that would lead to death. <laughs> Neighbors suspect Miner took a knife and killed his daughters. The cruel father stabbed one of them in the chest and the other on the neck. Police say the man who was drunk when he committed the act then sat on a jerry can as the lifeless bodies lay before him. Asa ni kama leo hiyo pombe imemdrag paka kaona maisha sasa venye anaona maisha ni magumu maana huyu mama ni mtu akwenda kujitafutia riski zake akaona afadhali afanye nini au uwe ndio mzigo uishe. Mimi kama mama nasikia uchungu maana amechinda watoto kinyama. Singependelea hivyo. The father was later arrested and taken to Nyali police station. Mombasa police commander Johnston Ipara said investigations had commenced. Rosongoi NTV. Quite a disturbing report there. Well, just to remind you of our opinion count question this evening, we asked you, is the president right in appointing a 91-year-old Mudia Wari to the sports board? Is the president right in appointing 91-year-old Moody Awori to the sports board? The hashtag Kazi Kwa Waze. We'd like to hear from you at NTV Kenya at Zainab Ismail. We'll be taking a very short break. We still have so much more lined up for you.
Welcome back. Thank you so much for staying with us. Now, the Kiambu governor and women representative renewed their rivalry in the presence of the head of state on Wednesday as they both sought to take credit for efforts at addressing alcoholism in the county. The two are leading two separate initiatives aimed at curbing the social problem. Antivis Brenda Wanga reports on the verbal fight that unfolded on the presidential dais. That Kiambu County leadership has been speaking at cross purpose isn't in doubt. And yesterday, right before the president, the rift between the county governor and the woman representative was clear. Hawa vijana ambao wananifanya hivi, hawa nipendi. Oh, what is your name? We do not do very long, what is your name? What is your name? The bone of contention between the two remains just how to handle the alcoholism scourge that remains the bane of this county. The governor has insisted that the alcoholics be employed by the county government and paid for their services as a deterrent to drinking, a proposal that cost the county an estimated 520 million shillings per year. The woman representative on the other hand believes that only rehabilitation will work and yesterday the first batch of the rehabilitated men and women under her program were receiving their certificates. While the two fought, the man they had invited into their backyard watched, choosing not to be drawn into the tough wars that have become characteristic of county leadership in Kiambu. <laughs> Alcoholism remains a huge challenge in this county with a survey carried out by Nakada indicating that 15% of residents of Kiambu County aged 15 to 65 years old are dependent on alcohol, tobacco and bang. Brenda Wanga. NTV. An anticipated blissful night for a Kisumu man turned sour after he found himself in slumberland courtesy of a spiked drink. Neighbors told NTV's Okokusa that they saw the man arrive home in the wee hours of the morning with a suspicious looking female companion whom they later caught stealing as the man lay on the bed unconscious. Here's the full story. Migosi Estate in the county of Kisumu is where the drama unfolded. The woman who stands accused of dragging a man she met at a local nightclub is receiving a beating of her lifetime from an irate crowd that is demanding to know from her the identity of the substance they accuse her of using to knock out her prey. Here is a first hand account of what transpired. Now this is the second dance. Najua girlfriend aumse. Na huyu akwa girlfriend. Sasa huyu ni take away. Sasa take away. Nikatoka. Nika nikapanda balcony, nika peep. Sijaona TV. Kitu ikanichapa ro. Kitu kishanichapa ro, nikakuja kubishia huyu. Deno ni rafiki wa nani? Rafiki wa Saidi. When the neighbors finally gained entry into the man's house, they found him lying unconscious on the bed while his takeaway was on the verge of taking away his television set and beddings. Mm. The suspected thief would later be saved by police who arrived in the nick of time as the livid crowd was preparing to lynch her. The early morning incident saw the man only identified as Saidi rushed to hospital while his takeaway was taken away by the police as residents bade for her blood. Okokusa, NTV.
All right, and on our opinion count this evening, we did ask you, is the president right in appointing 91-year-old Moody Awari to the sports board, the hashtag Kazi Kawaze, and we received quite a number of feedback here. I'll just read a few. Uh, James Gadu saying, not at all, President uh, Kenyatta is not justified in what he says that youths are corrupt. Not all youths are purported to be as he describes. At GA, Mukobole says that the appointment of Mudia Wari by the president should be based on his previous record. And nevertheless, I don't see anything wrong. Remember, keep, keep your tweets coming in. Uh, the hashtag is Kazi Kawaze. We'll be taking another short break. When we come back, we bring you the day's business news.
Welcome back. In our business news this evening, NISA Bank and the Commercial Bank of Africa could be set for a merger following the approval for commencement of discussions on the same by the boards of the two banks. If it sees the light of day, the merger will bring forth an entity with assets worth 444 billion shillings, displacing Cooperative Bank as the third largest bank by asset size. This development comes on the back of a rise in acquisition activity in the banking space with SBM Bank having acquired Chase and Fidelity Banks in August 2018 and May 2017 respectively. 2017 also witnessed the acquisition of Habib Bank by Diamond Trust Bank. The banking sector has over the last two years been shaped by declining interest income following adoption of caps on interest rates. Now, the multi-agency government team fighting counterfeit products has paid a visit to the Eldred International Airport to assess progress on the war on illicit trade. The team is conducting a three-day campaign to sensitize markets in the Rift region on the harmful and adverse effects of counterfeits to the economy and to consumers too. Among the counterfeit products recently seized in the region are foodstuff and medicine is that we rub out the notion that there was illicit business in Eldoret. This is just a notion, a perception, but through the efforts that have been done by the government agencies, we are sure that all is well, Eldoret is ready, and we are, we are gearing to move forward. Hype the agenda on food security and the problem of counterfeiting which can affect the food security agenda, which is uh, this county and this region is key in contributing. Elsewhere, wayward transporters have less than a month to shape up or ship out as plans to officially launch virtual way bridges on Kenyan highways reach top gear. The commissioning of the electronic devices follows successful trials carried out on 18 sites across the country. Okokusa reports. The Kenya National Highways Authority is exuding confidence that the virtual way bridges will go a long way in clamping down on overloading, speed up freight and save taxpayers billions of shillings on road repairs and close all avenues of graft. The level of compliance is improving and at the end of the day the aim is not to find people for overloading, the aim is to ensure that our road assets are preserved. Unlike the brick and mortar toll stations which are synonymous with congestion and corruption, the electronic way bridges are able to unobtrusively weigh trucks in motion, hence saving time. But in the long term, you will see more and more of the manual bridges disappearing and being replaced with the manual with the virtual, which doesn't hold, make the, the vehicles hold that long. You can use such a technology to make sure that uh, only those vehicles which are overloaded are diverted. Eh? Those which are compliant, they don't have to kill. And in that, it will bring the productivity of, uh, of those people's assets, which are the rollies and the men, to a higher level. The virtual way bridges, the first ones in Africa, are fitted with high-resolution cameras and sensors fixed on the ground that transmit signals in real time to a central control station located in Mlolongo in the county of Machakos. When with the cameras, you are able to pick the registration of the vehicle, the image of the vehicle, even the drivers you, are, you should be able to pick uh, with that. Records indicate that Kenya Roads Board in the financial year 2015-2016 allocated 29.17 billion shillings for road maintenance in the country, a significant increase from 25 billion shillings disbursed in the year ended June 2015. With the new bridges that have already gobbled up a cool 1.5 billion shillings, the government is optimistic that road maintenance costs will plummet. Okokusa, NTV. 
Now, youths and small and medium enterprises across the country are set to get a boost from a 50 billion shilling commitment by Kenya Commercial Bank to scale up their businesses in the next five years. The bank plans to lend 10 billion shillings each on young entrepreneurs to help them kickstart their businesses and increase their working capital. Speaking during the third graduation of 10,000 graduates of its youth enterprise program to Jiajiri in Nairobi, KCB's Chief Executive Joshua Oigara said that the bank would lend to the enterprise at an interest rate of 9% per annum. The event was graced by the head of state. We intend in the next three to five years to build enterprises to create one million direct jobs for our economy. Our government is laying heavy emphasis on vocational training. We have set aside some 30 billion Kenya shillings for this purpose in the next three years under the technical and vocational trading, training and education program, the NYS, as well as our polytechnics. And we are collaborating with the private sector under the Kenya Youth Employment and Opportunities Project to provide internships to support youth to acquire the prerequisite experience that employers require. Now, Kenya is now ranked at position 91 in the global paying taxes ranking, a marginal improvement from position 92 last year. This is according to the latest report by the World Bank and audit firm PwC, which ranks 190 countries on a number of aspects, including the number of payments made that are tax compliant. Here's Julian Samboko with the details on some of the hurdles that Kenya faces in improving its ranking. The ranking of countries with regard to the ease of payment of taxes is pegged on three key metrics. First, the number of payments made and the time taken in tax compliance. Secondly, the taxes borne by businesses as a proportion of their profit. And thirdly, the post-filing process such as the claiming of refunds from tax authorities. Kenya's improvement in the overall ranking notwithstanding, the country is faced with a number of challenges. This resolution, why we have that as an issue is because since April of this year, the tax appeals tribunal has not been properly constituted. The only person who is available within the tax appeals tribunal is the chairman of the tribunal, but they are not members of the tribunal. So cases are not being heard. Despite the gains made through the adoption of online filing, failure by the Kenya Revenue Authority to leverage on the data aggregated through these platforms also stands out as a challenge in tax compliance. They are really asking for information that's already been available by the iTax system. And it's very, very repetitive, so it will impact the time that is being spent to comply on tax matters. Adoption of ITAX has enabled Kenya to widen tax compliance. Looking forward, the Kenya Revenue Authority now says it is exploring avenues such as filing via mobile devices to build momentum on the progress made. Julian Samboko, NTV. All right, thank you so much, Julian Amboko, for all that report. And that wraps up our business news this evening. But we still have so much more lined up for you after this short break.
Thank you so much for staying with us. You're watching NTV tonight. Now, the Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission is preparing for a new era with only parliamentary approval awaited for former military and national intelligence officer Talib Mubarak to take office as a chief executive officer at Integrity Center. But even with this new wind blowing their way, the tide of clipping its wings still threatens the agency with a renewed bid to trim its mandate. But the graft body is asserting its resilience in the war against graft by defending its track record of arrests, convictions and recovery of assets, insisting that the war is not about the size of the fish caught, but nipping corruption in the bud. The revolving doors at Integrity Center have been the subject of feelings of hope in the fight against graft and ridicule towards the key occupants of the building where those investigated for graft frown upon visiting. Yeah. Well, Eh, ulinisimamisha hapo mbele ya bunge eh, nikafuta mawaziri mpaka wa leo this is two years hujaniambia where their guilt is with the fight against graft in the country on course the ethics and anti corruption commission has been in the eye of the storm in the recent past as attention on the war against graft seems to be peaking steam yes you see need to appreciate first is that um, it has not had uh, very good uh, some good confidence from the public in terms of uh, the work they have been doing. We have better news about corruption in Kenya from newspapers than the commission. For close to 20 years, the commission which has morphed from Kenya Anti-Corruption Authority in 1997 to the current EACC has been the lead agency in the anti-graft war and expectations from citizens have been huge. It would have been more prudent if the investigating agency also carried its matters to court and prosecuted itself. The EACC has been put on its defense time and again by members of parliament. When do you expect to receive those files back for action or when, do, when should we expect prosecution? It is up to the DPP to tell us when the files will be back. In the six years that the outgoing CEO has been in office, the anti-graft agency says it can boast of great strides in the fight against corruption. With 765 cases already forwarded to the Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions between 2013 and 2018, the EACC says that in the same period 128 cases have been finalized with 97 convictions, 6 discharges and 25 acquittals. In fact, uh, talk out there in the public that you should be disbanded or the commissioner should go home. In the last one month, we presented 48 files to the DPP, majority of which are not the small cases like the ones that we see here, out of which four of them are governors of counties, out of which there are PSAs, the anti-graft body was the key investigator in the NYS season 1 case, but unfortunately, a majority of key suspects were released by the court on technicalities. The NYS case, uh, you might say that, yes, uh, we were sidelined in the recent case, but you can recall that we were the lead agency in the first phase. And matters are still in court, not one file, many files. Season 2 saw the DCI take a lead role as investigator with the DPP just recently preferring fresh charges against 34 accused persons. The constitution tried to ensure that there are checks and balances. Indeed, in the past conflicts have risen between the EACC and the Office of the Director of Public Prosecution, which relies on the investigations carried out by the commission to put the suspects behind bars. Collaborating very effectively with the ODPP and the judiciary to have a seamless approach towards ensuring that corruption cases are dealt with conclusively. Prosecutors more involved in understanding what, 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 what are some of the gaps that are there uh, and that can be addressed on the onset uh, so that you don't have instances where um, it is alleged that, uh, that, that, that uh, uh, prosecutors have uh, uh, mishandled or uh, purposely uh, for lack of a better word, purposely um, let, let the file or the case fail. The EACC is now currently facing a fight for existence. Proposals to strip the anti-graft body of its investigation powers are currently within the precincts of the National Assembly. The changes, if adopted, would leave EACC totally devoid of powers to fight against graft and only able to tackle the issue of ethics in public. The bill proposing that the Commission's powers be transferred to the Directorate of Criminal Investigations is currently under 
the miscellaneous bill number 12 of 2018 and might be debated further in the coming year. But EACC spells out its mandate. It notes that it has been given a legal mandate to apply in court for preservation and protection of traced illegally acquired assets. Leila Mohamed, NTV. All right, thank you so much, Leila Mohamed, for that report. Sean Cardavillis is in studio to bring you all the sporting action after this break. Greatness starts at the very beginning. When a dream is born and nurtured to grow. When talent is awakened. When you receive the right spark, a fire is ignited. When we build the skills for the journey and the friendships to go the whole way. At Wood Creek School, we believe in nurturing the greatness in every individual. So we welcome you to our open day on the 8th and 9th of December 2018 from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. at our campus on Kamiti Road. Atuwe ni yekeka kuota. Ati oja oja uskia ni gani unataka. Mpaka ukita mtu, ah that's the same way anakuangalia. Wee jogona, eh? Order your Mabati online from www.royalmabati.to.ke and get your Mabati straight from press, brand new. And what's more, we'll deliver it free of charge. Visit www.royalmabati.to.ke and order your Mabati online today. Continuously ranked amongst the top universities in Africa and best in East and Central Africa, the University of Nairobi invites applicants for the January 2019 intake in our campuses in Nairobi, Mombasa, Kisumu and the Eldoret Learning Center. For more information and courses offered, visit our website www.unbi.ac.ke or apply online at www dot application dot unbi dot ac dot ke the university of nairobi a world-class university committed to scholarly excellence niaje want to invest in a biashara that will take your hustle to the next level say you'll be there every day because i'm here then partner with Betin, the fastest growing Biashara in Kenya today. Open a Betin shop wherever you are. You don't want to miss this great opportunity. Grow nasty. A very good evening to you and welcome to the Sports News. Now, the Football Kenya Federation President Nick Mwendwa has set the minimum target for Harambe Stars at the 2019 Africa Cup of Nations is to advance past the group stages. This as the FKF confirmed that Kenya has qualified for the Continental Tournament for the first time in 15 years. The assignment will require a total budget of slightly over 200 million shillings. Uh, the Federation will decide on a possible venue for a pre-AFCON residential camp and that that's after the Confederation of African Football makes its decision on the country to host the tournament. Uh, CAF has released the official communication that Sierra Leone has been disqualified from the tournament and that the top two teams from Group F shall qualify for AFCON 2019, which as it stands is Kenya and Ghana. The team is still awaiting the 50 million shillings promised by the government as reward for the qualification. The plan is that in May, once the season ends, immediately the season ends, which is around May 9th, 11th, then we will be on camp for three weeks before going to the Cup of Nations. And we shall come back to you once it is confirmed where the Cup of Nations If it will be in the northern part of Africa, for sure we will host in France. If it will be down south, then we have to change the plan and work on a new plan. What will be? We had even organized for a friendly against Jamaica in London. 
Uh, we've been in communication to them uh, in the last one year. We wanted to have a game, a Kenya versus Jamaica game in London. We shall wait. If uh, it's the, the Cup of Nations will be in the northern part of Africa, then we shall uh, play in London against Jamaica and also shall play another two or three matches in France against some West African sides uh, or against some African sides so that we can build the team and then we go to the Cup of Nations. Now, Athletics Kenya has re reiterated its warning against doping, saying any Kenyan athlete sanctioned for the offence will not represent the country in any championship events. This was at the start of a three-day athletics conference where Athletics Kenya President uh, Jackson Tuwe announced that Kenyan athletes will only be allowed to compete at the World Championships and Olympics after going through a three out-of-competition doping tests and similar number of tests during competitions. Technical University of Kenya student Sasha Mongeli has been named as the Sports Journalist Association of Kenya Sports Personality of the Month for October. Mongeli beat Equity Hawks player Belinda Okoth, a tennis sensation Angela Okoyoti and Abraham Kiptum for the accolade. The 21-year-old attained the High Women Fide Master title during the World Chess Olympiad that was held in Batumi, Georgia, and that was between the 28th of September and the 6th of October. Peter Ruto and Justa Kwamesa booked their tickets to Ken uh, for Kenya at the first Summer Deaf Olympic Youth Games, which will be held in Armenia in June next year. Uh, Kwamesa and Ruto qualified for the Summer Deaf Olympic Youth Games after winning their races at the 5,000 meters at the National Youth Death, Deaf sorry, Athletics Championships trials that began on Thursday at the Kasarani Stadium. The inaugural three-day Moses Tanui Interregional Junior Golf Tournament got underway at the nine-hole Eldoret Golf Club on Thursday. The event brought together 36 players from North Rift, Central Rift, Nairobi Region, Coast, Mount Kenya and Western Region. Uh, the first round took place uh, today, while the second and third rounds are set for Friday, with the final round being played on Saturday. The man behind the tournament is the two-time Boston Marathon champion and avid golfer Moses Tanui. I would like to see the young, talented uh, young golfers to play also in uh, Ryder Cup in US or um, PGA or uh, European Tour. So I would like to see them uh, in future that we have a team from Kenya that can represent. England and Manchester United legend Rio Ferdinand is expected in the country on the 13th of December ahead of a three-day tour courtesy of Guinness. The former defender, now turned football pundit, will be meeting local football teams at a soccer camp. In addition, he'll, uh, he will on Saturday uh, join up to 3,500 fans at the Guinness Fan Zone for live screening of the English Premier League matches where Manchester City take on Everton while Tottenham Hotspur tackle Burnley. Uh, Ferdinand, by the way, is one of the most decorated English footballers of all time with 81 England caps and playing in three World Cup squads and during his career at Manchester United he won six Premier League titles and 14 trophies including the Champions League. Slight difference between death and deaf. Uh, back to you Zainab. All right, thank you so much, Sean. Well, before we close this uh, biz, uh, this uh, news, we have uh, quite an interesting uh, remarks here from people in regard to that question we asked on our opinion count this evening. We asked is the president to write in appointing 91-year-old Moody Awari to the sports board, and the hashtag was Kazi Kowaze. I'll just sample here a few. Uh, at Koech Charles saying board appointees are not involved in day-to-day -day running of the institution but will offer advisory role. Who else is best suited to provide a mix of experience other than Mudiawari? I have Otiato Omondi saying this is an insult by the president to the youth. Uncle Awari should, should rest and leave the youth to also grow in the area of public service. And finally, 
at Bernabus Mueu saying, no, he's not. We, the young tax, need jobs. How do we make it to those office if he doesn't, he does not trust and trust us with that responsibility of delivering? Let's be honest with one another. It's those old folks who are defrauding us, not the young tax. Well, that is your opinion this evening on Opinion Count. Thank you so much for making the time for us and being with us all throughout. Uh, my name is Enabi Smile. Our sign language interpreter this evening was David Agondor from the entire team here. Good evening.